In this section, we're going to go ahead and create workspace users. In the previous lesson, we took a look at what it takes to create a workspace inside of our Apex environment. As part of the creation of our workspace, we automatically get a user called admin. The admin user is like the sys user in an Oracle database or the root user in a Linux environment. You could do everything inside your database as the sys user or do everything inside your Unix environment as the root user, but it's generally not a good idea to do that. It's much more advantageous to go ahead and create users in the environment that have specific roles and responsibilities. We're going to go ahead and do that in our Apex workspace now. We're going to be working at the workspace level. This means that anything we do at the workspace level affects the applications we create, the pages inside those applications, the regions inside those pages, and the items inside those regions. We have the ability to create very fine-grained security privileges on all of the objects underneath the workspace. So in this example, we're going to hop into our Oracle Application Express environment, log into the workspace that we created as the admin user, and then start creating some users. So if you remember, in our previous section, we created a workspace called movies underscore WS. And I'm going to log into that workspace as the admin user. Once I log in, I can click on the administration icon to start creating users and groups. I then click on manage users and groups, and I have the ability to go in there and now create these different objects inside of my workspace. By default, you can see the one user that's created for us automatically, the admin user. Groups are nothing more than the ability to group users together to do bulk level operations on them, like export a bunch of users from a dev environment to a production environment or change security privileges all in one shot. I'm going to create a real simple user group and I'll call it movies devs, developers in my movies. To create a new user, I simply click on the users tab and then select create user. I obviously have to give the user a username, and you can see by default, I also have to specify an email address. If you remember from our previous sections, we said that we can communicate from users to administrators and from administrators to users using email. This mechanism allows us to develop users and developers who can say to their administrators, hey, I need more space or I need access to these objects. It also makes it easier for administrators to communicate to all the developers or end users that something's changed inside either the Application Express environment or the application itself. So I'm going to create a new user and I'll just call him Paul and I'll give him a simple email address. I can specify his first name, last name, description, the default date format I'm going to use when communicating with Paul. And then under account privileges, I can start to specify what privileges this user will have inside the database that's holding Apex. The default schema is going to be the same schema that I specified when I created the workspace, in this case, movies. I'm also going to specify movies as the accessible schema for this particular user. I can specify if this user is a workspace administrator, which means that this person can go in and create new users and do other administrative type capabilities. If they're a developer, if I specify yes as a developer, you can see that access to the application builder, the SQL workshop automatically turns to yes. If I specify no, it defaults to no. Will they have access to team development features, which we're going to cover in a new lesson? And if their account is locked or unlocked? This makes it real easy if a developer leaves your team for whatever reason. Instead of having to go through and export all of their objects to some other user, you can simply lock their account and still have access to their objects. I can specify a password, and I can also specify if the password has to be changed on first use. This is very convenient for when developers and end users forget their password. You can reset the password to something simple and then require them to change it on first use. So I'm going to specify a real simple password here, say that they do not have to change it on first use, and that they're going to be part of the Movies Devs user group. Once I have everything specified, I can simply say Create User, or if I want to create another user immediately, I can say Create and then Create Another User. I simply Create User, and you can see now I also have the Administrative User, and now I also have the Poll User who is set up as a developer inside of my workspace. The user Paul can now log into Oracle Application Express using the login that we provided in a previous section. 
they then have access to all of the development capabilities inside of my Apex environment, inside of this particular workspace. Let's create another user, and this is going to be an end user. So I'll call him end user, and again, just put in a simple email address. I'll specify the default schema. I'll say they have access to the movies. And this time I'm going to say, you know what? They're not an administrator. They're not a developer. They don't need access to the team development. They're going to have an unlocked account. And I'll also specify a password for them and say that they do not have to change their password on the first use. And I'm not going to make them part of the development group. This is going to be an end user. So this end user will have the ability to run applications inside of my workspace, but pretty much nothing else. They don't have any administrative capabilities. They don't have any developer capabilities. They don't have any access to the team development capabilities that are built into Apex. They're strictly going to be an end user who has access to the applications, but nothing else. As we'll see as we start working through the development process, the hierarchy of different pieces inside of our Apex environment will become very important because we'll have the ability to set fine level access to the different applications, the different pages that make up those applications, the regions inside those pages, and all the way down to the individual items inside those regions. We can specify what an end user can see, what they can modify. It's a very important part of Oracle Application Express Security. Once I go through and say create user, I'm then taken back to the page that shows all of my users in the system, and I have the ability as the administrator to go in and edit and change any of this information around at any time.